Okay, you are alive. All right. Well, welcome everybody. We're we're back. <laughs> we're back virtual. Uh, happy New Year, if I'm allowed to still say that to, to those viewing and, and my colleagues here. Uh, we're here for the Health Athletic Community Council meeting, January 18th. We'll do a quick audio and video check for those attending, and I'll start with Councilor Mason. Councilor Mason, District 7, Halifax South Downtown, all present and correct, sir. Thank you. Councilor Cleary. Councilor Cleary, Halifax West, Armdale, District 9, reporting for duty. Thank you. Councilor Moore. Councilor Morris, joining you from Clayton Park. Good to see everybody. Thank you. Councilor Cuddle. Good evening, everyone. Um, I'm here in Brussels Cove representing District 11, Spryfield, Sambro Loop, and the Prospect Road communities. Thank you. And Councilor Stoddard. Good evening, everyone. I'm coming to you from Timberley in District 12, Lakeside, Beachville, Timberley, Clayton Park, West, and Wedgwood. Good evening. Thank you. Um, all right, so we'll go to approval of the minutes, December 15th. Can I have a mover and seconder, please? No moved, Councilor Cleary. I'll moved second by that. Councilor Cleary, seconded by Councilor Cuddle. Any uh, changes to the minutes? See none. Uh, call the question on the minutes. Question. Question is called. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Minutes are approved. Uh, approval of order of business and approval of additions and deletions. Ms. Clerk. We have no additions or deletions from the clerk's office. Thank you. Any changes from members? Moved as circulated, Councillor Cleary. Thank you. Second it by. I'll second it. Councillor Stoddard. All those in favor of the approval of the agenda? Say aye. 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 Both and nay. All right, we got an agenda. Moving to business arising of the minutes, we have none. Call for conflict of interest. See none. Motions of reconsideration, we have none. Motion of rescission, there are none. Consideration of deferred business, there are none. Notice of tabled matters, we have none. Moving to our public hearing which is 10.1.1 land use bylaw for front yard setbacks in the C to C Depsilus Road mixed use zone. And we have Mr. Gillis here um, to present to the rest of the staff. And prior to the, oh, let me, <laughs> I don't need to read that part. Again, thank you for joining us. An order of events and virtual hearing will be a staff presentation. Uh, then we'll give the applicant the, an opportunity to provide comments. Uh, and then we will hear from speakers, from the public, and the deadline to register as a speaker was 4.30, the business day prior to the hearing, which was Friday, January 14th, and we, currently we have one speaker, uh, one speaker um, registered for this public hearing. Sorry, trying to read the chat and speak at the same time. We started a correction in your your notes. Um, it was Monday, uh, the sixteenth at four thirty. Thank you. So had to be registered by Monday, January sixteenth, uh, before four thirty. Thank you. Or, or yeah, four thirty. Uh, all right. So um, we do we have any correspondence on this item? Yes, there were several pieces of correspondence that were received and distributed uh, for item 1011 uh, and circulated to the community council prior to the meeting. Thank you very much. Uh, and all right, moving on to our presentation. And Mr. Gillis, I did see you, so the floor is yours. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Good evening, members of Halifax and West Regional Council. My name is Sean Gillis. I'm with the regional planning team in planning and development. So as noted, this is the public hearing for proposed land use bylaw amendments to the C2C Dutch Village Road mixed use zone. Just 
just waiting for my slides to advance here. So, Sean, you actually advance them yourself. No, I'm I'm waiting for them to advance. Oh. Exactly. <laughs> it wouldn't be a Zoom public hearing without some tech problems, right? So. Okay, perfect, perfect. Okay, sorry about that. So today, staff is proposing in response to some council direction and an application, uh, a small but important change to the C2C zone. And what we're proposing is an increase to the minimum front and flanking yard setbacks in the C2C zone, going from zero meters to 1.5 meters. So a quick little chart, the existing standards would be a minimum zero meter setback with a maximum setback of three meters for both front and flanking yards. Uh, proposed, the subject of the public hearing, is a minimum of 1.5 meters and a maximum of three meters. So just a quick review of what we're talking about when we're looking at front setbacks. Where are we measuring from? So we're measuring a front setback from the front property line. So where private property meets the public street. And so this is a generic street, just a side view showing you the property line. So in this case, what we're showing would be an example where buildings are built pretty much right to the street, zero front yard setback. So a different example showing you still the property lines, but that space, that distance between the front property line and the front of the building is the front setback. So we are looking to increase that front setback from zero to 1.5 meters. And specifically, we're only talking about front setbacks in one zone, the C2C zone, which applies in Fairview, mainland Halifax, and generally or exclusively is found on Titus Dutch Village Road, Alma Crescent and Joseph Howe Drive, the streets in blue on the right. So these are generally more commercial streets where you have more businesses and a little bit larger buildings than on the surrounding neighborhood. And the C2C zone itself is meant to be a commercial uh, residential mixed use zone to allow development around Dutch Village Road, which is Fairview's main street. So another view of the C2C zone, it takes up a lot of area around Dutch Village Road, but it's only uh, on properties that front onto those couple of streets we mentioned. So important streets, but it's really not gonna impact outside this area. So going through some of the current conditions on Dutch Village Road, this is Dutch Village Road itself. The street on the right, this is at the corner of Rufus. You can see some of the newer buildings, a mix of new and old, definitely very different setbacks and really becoming a much more urban street, a lot more density and a lot more building lately. This is the corner of Dutch Village and Frederick. Uh, near the Dairy Queen, near the, the corner of Rosedale, the older apartment buildings on Dutch Village Road again. And this particular building is at the corner of Dutch Village Road and Rosedale. And important to point this one out, keep this in mind. Uh, we'll talk about it a little bit later. But this is an example of a building that meets the C2C zone's current standards. So there's no front yard setback here. This is built to the front property line. And as you can see, it is quite a bit closer to the street than many of the other buildings around it. So under the C2C zone, it's possible to build right up to that front yard, right up, excuse me, right up to the front property line. Now, one reason that this is very important is that uh, HRM staff with, with council direction are working on a plan to add sidewalks, bike lanes and general improvements to the streetscape along Dutch Village Road. As you saw, there's no 
sidewalk on one side of the street right now, despite it being a really important commercial street, a really central street in the neighborhood, and also a place where buses run. So there's some bus stops. So this would be a huge improvement. When we have buildings that come very close to the street, that makes a lot of challenges both for building those buildings, but also for designing a proper sidewalk, the best sidewalk we can, and the best bike lanes. So there is uh, a little bit of a sense of urgency with this one in that we want to make sure that buildings coming along on in the future uh, provide some space for a better outcome. So as I mentioned, this came out of both council direction and a applicant driven project an application, if you will. So in March of 2021, in response to a request to expand the C2C zone, council initiated an amendment process and also told staff to review the C2C, C2C zone requirements, including the setback requirements we're talking about tonight. And again, in the summer of 2021, council directed the CAO to consider changes to the C2C zone to improve safety and to create space for landscaping, trees and transportation infrastructure. So when we got that second motion, it's a little bit more urgency, we've got a second request from council, but also important to understand that internally, HRM planning staff was talking to folks uh, in other departments working on the design of the sidewalk, and they were concerned about uh, the setback and how zero meters caused a number of issues that we'll talk about. So there are a further potential amendments to the C2C zone coming in response to case 23245, but because of the urgency of making sure that we had space for the future sidewalk and good outcomes for all these buildings, uh, staff took this one separately and moved it forward a little bit quicker. So the public engagement feedback, it's very important to note that the engagement was through surveys for two cases related to the C2C zone, case 22816 and 23245. So there's a lot going on in and around Fairview. and we originally wanted to not bombard the public with too, too much. So we sent out the surveys and we didn't specifically ask about front yard setbacks. Uh, we did give people a question about what do you think of new buildings? And so some of the responses we got back were actually about the C2C zone and the lack of setbacks for new buildings. And specifically, buildings at the corner of Rosedale and Dutch Village, one of which we saw. Uh, people are very concerned that the visibility is poor, that balconies are too close to the street, that buildings so close to the street are imposing, and that there is no landscaping. And so that was some of the comments. We didn't get a huge number of comments, but we did hear it. And so that really kind of jived with what staff were thinking and what we were also hearing from people working on the, the sidewalk at Dutch Village Road. So I'm going to go back to this picture and I want to point out a few things to give it just a sense of scale. This isn't exact, but I was going through these pictures and I thought, hmm, this picture kind of gets at what we're talking about pretty well. So if you'll notice on the left, we've got the Girl Guides of Canada building and, oh, sorry about that. So on the left, the Girl Guides of Canada building that building is pretty much zero meters from the front property line. It's basically built as close as you can to the HRM right of way. Now, by contrast, the apartments in behind, 3569 with the green, the far corner is ballpark two meters off the HRM right of way. And it gets a bit bigger as you come towards the Girl Guides of Canada building, um, between two and four meters. So it's not an exact comparison of what we're proposing which is 1.5 meters, but just to give a sense of what that looks like on a real building. So 1.5 meters is not a particularly large setback, but this is transforming into a fairly urban place and the lots are irregularly shaped. So there are a lot of challenges with potentially larger setbacks. So just a quick review again, the proposed amendments 
which are within your report package are to change the uh, front and flanking setbacks to increase the minimum front and flanking setbacks from zero to 1.5 meters to deal with a number of the challenges that we've found and that we've identified with a zero meter uh, front yard setback. And I'll do a quick review of those challenges, which are in your report. But what we see is that when you have a building directly at the sidewalk or directly at the HRM right of way, it does cause a lot of potential issues with grading and landing. Your doors, your entrances, they have to match the grade of the sidewalk. If you have no space, that can make it challenging to design your entrance or conversely to design the sidewalk around that entrance. When we get to construction, uh, rebuilding or maintaining streets uh, that are directly next to uh, a foundation is harder than even just 50, 75 centimeters. So it does make a big difference. So modest setbacks can reduce that problem. Setbacks provide space for landscaping. They provide space for the public realm. And one other thing to consider is that uh, there are mandatory utility setbacks in place for many of these zones, uh, specifically from power lines. So in some cases, builders already have to push back for a safety distance between the power lines that are in the HRM right of way, especially above the first floor. So that's just a, a quick rundown of some of the challenges that we've identified with zero meters and some of the reasons that we support this and wanted to bring it forward reasonably quickly. So with that said, the staff recommendation is to approve the proposed amendments to increase the minimum required front and flanking yard setbacks in the C2C zone. So thank you very much. I'm done my presentation, but happy to answer any questions. Thank you, Sean. I have two questions or two, two members, uh, first starting with Councillor Cleary. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Mr. Gillis. Just a, so a quick question around arriving at the one and a half meters. So when I look at other pedestrian oriented main streets, so I'll give you an example from the center plan we recently adopted. Uh, Quinpool Road, where I live, uh, is two and a half meter minimum setback. And there is also a maximum setback as well, because you want to engage and activate the street front, but you also need the room, whether it's snow storage, whether it's active transportation. Uh, so how did staff arrive at the one and a half versus maybe going a little bit more, two meters, two and a half meters, as we see in some of our other streets in urban uh, context? Absolutely. So one of the thoughts is that in this case, Dutch Village Road and area has a lot of irregularly shaped lots. So in many cases, the street line's not actually straight, it's kind of curving and moving. So requiring bigger setbacks would exacerbate that because buildings are straight, generally not curved. So you'd be um, pushing back from your your farthest point back. Another reason on Dutch Village Road is that uh, the lots themselves in many cases are quite, they're not very deep. So the farther you push people back, uh, the less room they have to build. The third reason is somewhat because we'd already put a zero meter setback in place in 2016, and we're not suggesting that that's the right answer. So to some extent, you've already promised or suggested or allowed a little bit more buildable area. So to claw that back is a little bit tougher than, for example, Quimpool Road, where there's been setbacks in place in those bylaws for a long, long time. So that's three reasons. Uh, the final thing I would add is to a certain extent within reason, setting a setback is a little bit art and a little bit science. You look at what did the center plan do? What's the the conditions on the ground and you try to make the best of the competing demands. So 1.5 is what we're suggesting and there certainly could be other good answers within that range. But uh, given the tightness of some of those lots, two and a half just felt big. So that's, that's some of the thinking there. 
So it would be fair to say that this is a reasonable balance of all the competing interests for that uh, space. That's what staff would feel. Yes, it's it's a balance. It's uh, a lot of competition for space. We're going for the best balance we can. There's a lot of ways to talk about that. And that's something that the committee uh, should really talk about if you feel otherwise. Thank you very much. Thank you, Councillor. Next, Councillor Cuddle. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, I see my initials are kind of flipped there today for some reason. Um, yeah, so uh, this is great. I am really excited that to see this come forward. Um, I, uh, I too have been concerned over time about the, the lack of space in our right of way for things like landscaping, um, active transit, and just as we continue to densify areas, ensuring that we have a really good quality public realm and the sidewalks are such an important part of that public realm. Um, so I just have a couple questions related to um, what you're presenting there with, with the setbacks in the building. Like if we took that building, for example, next to the Girl Guides um, building there and you kind of gave the example of the setbacks, I'm wondering where that was being measured from. Was that being measured from the building or from the bulk, from the outermost part of the balconies? Because um, one of the other things I've been a little bit concerned about is when the balconies encroach out from the building over, over the public right away, um, hanging over the public right away. And with the, you know, two and a half or uh, one, is it, sorry, one and a half, I've lost my notes here. Um, with the minimum requirement, is that going to ensure that there's enough space for balconies without them hanging over the public realm. Um, the other question I had is in 2016, when that change was made to bring it to the lot line, was there also with that an increase in height around the Dutch Village Road planning area and inclined back? I mean, um, you know, how much, you know, pre-2016 to um, post-2016, how much will the, the volume of what you're allowed to construct actually be affected? And um, my third question, sorry there. <laughs> uh, my third question, and you're kind of starting to get to it with the, with the wiggle of the road, because we have this up on Herring Cove Road too, right? Where you, you see the width of the sidewalk vary and the type of the sidewalk vary. And it's not always kind of these straight surveyed lines. So, um, you know, when we look at the, the wiggle room, are we also looking at the width of the right of way to ensure that we have enough space from, from edge to edge to fit in everything that's required? So I'll try to get all those and uh, just prompt me if I missed some. So in terms of where we measure from, for our, our our setbacks they're sometimes called front yard setbacks so we're measuring from the the foundation to the front property line so in the case of the building uh for example that we're looking at there's often encroachments at ground level such as stairs coming out uh into those front setbacks so that's a good reason to have a front setback you can put your stair out without you know a whole bunch of changes to your building uh, in terms of hanging over for a balcony, if you're going to push out and go over the HRM right of way, then you're going to have to talk to uh, our TPW folks about an encroachment, the details of which I don't know. Um, is 1.5 meters enough space so that you're not hanging over? I guess there would be two things to consider. For the C2C zone, you have a street wall maximum. So that 1.5 meters is only going to be for the first uh, couple of floors of the building, then it comes back. So um, to a certain extent, we could say that it's up to the builder, designer, uh, developer to figure out how they place their uh, balconies. That being said, balconies are really desirable for tenants. And you're right, we don't want uh, balconies so that they're just hanging over the sidewalk and effectively erasing the front yard setback 
and the effect of pushing the street wall back. I don't know offhand if we if we um, cap the amount of horizontal space you can do with balconies and the depth in the C2C zone. I can check that in a little bit. Um, off the top of my head, I don't think we do, but I'd have to take a look. In terms of 20, 2016, uh, yes, it was an up zone. So there was two things that would have been changed. The major changes would have been uh, you can do more. So in many cases, six stories as of right, in some cases, more as of right, and in some cases, even more than that through DA. So yes, there was an up zone. Also, we went from uh, a standard residential, excuse me, a standard commercial zone to a mixed use zone. So that opens up way more possibilities, uh, especially in a tight housing market right now. And the final question was, are we looking at right of way width for all the things we want to do? Yes, but it, it, it's difficult. So in this case with Dutch Village Road, there's, we're lucky in some ways in that there's an active plan uh, to get sidewalks, bike lanes, and just a much better streetscape in general. So some of that, I believe, will require uh, some property acquisition. I don't want to say too much more about that because I don't know the details. So when we're doing this, uh, we have different teams designing, we have different teams trying to, to acquire property, and then we have planners saying, hold on, even if you can do this, if someone builds a building down the road, then there goes that property acquisition, or we've just made it tough to grade the sidewalk, or we've made it tough for the developer to properly exit onto the sidewalk with their landing pads. So um, I think the simplest thing to say is this is a help. It doesn't solve all of those issues. Dutch Village Road is not a super wide right-of-way and very few of our right-of-ways are. Uh, where we tend to have lots of right-of-way, we don't have a lot of activity. So great, we can do lots of stuff, but it's not our main streets like Dutch Village Road that anchor neighborhoods. So um, I, I think I got the three of them, but uh, correct me if I'm wrong. Oh, yeah, you did. Yeah, thank you for my third questions. Yes, thank you very much. Thank you, uh, Councilor Morse. Thank you, Mr. Chair, and thank you, Sean, for the report and presentation. It's uh, it's a lot more complicated than it looks, and I appreciate how you've uh, <laughs> tried to keep it simple as possible. Um, I wonder if you could explain a little bit more about the maximum, the relationship between the minimum and maximum setback, whether there's any flexibility on the maximum setback. And if we went to a two meter um, minimum, if we could change the maximum, just, just a little bit on, on what kind of flexibility there is there, please. So within reason, uh, we have a fair bit of flexibility. Uh, staff is, is proposing the changes uh, based on council direction. So if we went to two meters, uh, then the maximum that we're proposing would be three. And so uh, I believe you're gonna hear from a caller and we got some, uh, some correspondence on that question of like how much flexibility is there? And so um, there's a lot of numbers that could work well. And so I think the question that I would suggest that the committee talks about is exactly what are you trying to achieve and how much flexibility for builders uh, versus HRM designers versus other competing interests. Um, two meters would make for a nicer streetscape for sure. And I do think based on the, the correspondence we got that we really should look at that maximum uh, that we have at three meters. So the idea of a maximum setback is going back to kind of urban design fundamentals where if you're trying to create an urban space, urban spaces need what's called enclosure. They need some walls and you wanna create some three-dimensional space. So Dutch Village Road is a great example. Uh, the bigger stores, uh, some of the older buildings are way back from the street. So that enclosure falls apart. So the maximum is an idea that says, we don't want you too far back because we want you near the street to make things better for pedestrians and also uh, it's better if you're a pedestrian yourself coming out of a building to be two and a half meters from the sidewalk than to be 25. That's just closer. So that's the thinking there. 
Uh, whether we've got the number right, um, happy to talk about. And I, I do think we need a bigger maximum maybe. And that's a relatively easy change to the proposed amendments uh, should council wanna, wanna make a change. There will be process impl implications, but we can talk about that. Okay, thank you. I mean, I, it, it, what you mentioned is absolutely true. I mean, there are places on that street that must have 25 meter setbacks, <laughs> you know, like Giant Tiger and some of those places, they're, they're way at the back of the, uh, the store or the restaurant is at the back of the lot and all the parking is at the front. So we have all these varying situations on Dutch Village Road. And it seems to me, if you've got some that are 25 meter setbacks, that we might have a little more flexibility on the, on the three meters or you know, whatever we, we end up with. But anyway, thank you. That's great for now. Thank you. Thanks. So not seeing anybody else, uh, going to go to uh, open the public hearing. And we are the applicant. So we don't need them unless Sean, you want to speak again. Uh, but I'm assuming I'm assuming you don't. So going to uh, go to our speakers. And just as a reminder that any member of the public who has registered with the clerk's office has five minutes to speak. When I call your name, you may unmute your mic and begin speaking. Each speaker is asked to begin stating your name in the community which you reside in for the record. Please keep your comments respectful on time and directed to me, the chair. Uh, once you finish your comments and answer any question of clarification that might come from members, please leave the Zoom meeting and watch the rest from the webcast. And as mentioned earlier, we have one speaker who is here this evening, and that is Ian Watson. And Ian, if you are there or in the meeting, please unmute and say hello. Hello, hello. Can you hear me Welcome. all right? Welcome. Yep, I can see you and hear you. Welcome, and you have five minutes. Perfect. Thank you, Mr. Chair, and thank you, counselors, and also Sean for your, Mr. Gillis, for your presentation. Um, so my name is Ian Watson uh, of North End Halifax. Uh, I'm senior planner with Upland Plan Planning and Design. We're one of the applicants on one of the files that's uh, was that Sean mentioned. Um, I'm here tonight. I think, well, I guess on the base of it to to give my opposition to the change as proposed. Um, and if I put on my developer hat, that's where I would end. I'd say, please don't do this. Um, but I'm a planner and I'm an urbanist and I also really empathize and sympathize with staff uh, and their position on this file. So uh, I did make a written submission. Um, I'll rehash some of that if you didn't read it. But um, basically, uh, you know, the 1.5 meters uh, may sound like a simple change. And you know, what is it? Five feet. It's not a big deal. Um, but uh, in the Dutch Village Road corridor, we have a couple of uh, big challenges. One of them, you know, as, as builders and as developers. One of them, uh, Mr. Gillis alluded to, is that the property lines along that corridor are higgledy piggledy. <clears throat> Excuse me, they're some of the wildest in the city, I would say. Um, and so, you know, uh, to reiterate, re reiterate Mr. Gillis's point, uh, buildings are often straight, the property lines aren't. How do you make those mesh up? Uh, the other issue is uh, the corridor is a big slope, so there's a lot of, you know, needing to be able to push and pull buildings a little bit to make those slopes work and to make those entrances work and, uh, and all that. Uh, so the challenge in this proposal as, as currently framed uh, is, uh, you know, if we're increasing that minimum setback to go from zero to 1.5, uh, there is still a maximum setback in this zone of three meters. So as, as designers and as builders, the room that we have to push and pull a building to make it work with the grades to make it work with the wonky property lines to make it work with all the other things that need to to happen to have a functional building you know garage entrances and public entrances and public space and bike racks and all that kind of stuff you know that degree of flexibility uh is cut in half and really gives you you know one and a half meters to play with which is really tight uh it makes it very challenging so you know that right there is a huge problem. Uh, another, you know, some more minor problem is I think uh, Mr. Gillis kind of alluded to it is that uh, there is also an upper story step back requirement in the C2C zone. So above a certain uh, number of floors, the upper stories are stepped back. It makes for a nicer pedestrian environment. It's great. The thing is that's measured from the front of the building. So if you're pushing the front of the building back, you're also pushing those upper stories back. Um, which has you know implications for how uh, 
developable these upper floors are, particularly on uh, some of the smaller lots in, in the Dutch Village Road corridor. Uh, finally, um, there is one other street that this zone applies to, and that's Main Avenue. It's only a small portion now. Uh, a big component of our application is to extend it further down Main Avenue to allow mixed use building. Um, and along Main Avenue, actually, there is a seven meter difference uh, between where the edge of the sidewalk is and where the property line is, which is ample space to do, you know, to address all these concerns that staff has with uh, adding new sidewalks, constructability, that kind of thing. Uh, you know, so here's the case where it's kind of a hammer that pushing us back a, a meter and a half further uh, doesn't really change um, the the situation on the street. It just makes it worse for us without benefiting the public particularly. So uh, in short, you know, as proposed, I, I, I'm not particularly keen about it. Uh, so I would like to see, you know, I request uh, either tonight or, you know, well, I guess you can't make the change tonight, but to go back and uh, put a little more thought into that maximum setback, maybe even doing a, you know, in center plan, for example, there is a, a front setback map that looks at different parts of different streets and has a, a appropriate setback for each one. I think that would make a lot of sense around the, along the Dutch Village Road to go to Councillor Cuddle's uh, point about uh, that right of way in some areas, right of way is huge, and you can get all the stuff you need for your um, sidewalk plan. In some areas, it's tight and awkward, and maybe you need to make more room uh, on the private side of things to make it all work out. So you could take that, you know, more refined approach and and, and implement appropriate setbacks that. Uh, Thirty get, seconds. Thank you. Get that public um, benefit and get that public infrastructure in place. Well, well, minimizing the impact on uh, the developability in, uh, along the Dutch Village Road corridor. So thank you very much. Thank you very much. And we got a question clarification from Councilor Cleary. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, and thank you, Mr. Watson. Uh, just a quick question. So, and I understand where you're coming from, uh, but you're being very sort of general, uh, almost to the point of vague. So when I look at the uh, center plan, which you mentioned, you know, you look at Gottagen Street and there's three meters, uh, one and a half meters, two meters, depending on which section you're on. Quinpool Road, as I mentioned earlier on, two and a half meters. Um, and I understand the, the ge road geometry of, of uh, Dutch Village, but can you be a, a bit more specific? So can you give me an example of a project on Dutch Village where uh, moving from zero setback to one and a half meter setback, uh, what problems exactly that would cause, how much square footage will be lost, where the entrances would or wouldn't be able to go. Because, you know, in general, we can say, you know, this could happen, but um, given where we want the public realm to be a little bit more open and where we want to push things back a little bit, can you be more specific about what the negative or what the downside would be per to, a, to a particular building? Can, can you, I don't know if you can be that specific, but if you could, could you offer that? Yeah, so, so the one, I mean, the one that I can be specific about is our, our the proposed application that we, or thank you, Councilor Cleary, uh, is, the, is the proposed application we have on uh, the corner of Titus and Main. Uh, so we have two frontages, Titus and then Main. Um, currently the building is designed and it's conceptual at this point, uh, comes up the, the property line on that one, you know, you think it's all, um, a straight line, but it actually cuts in quite a bit just past the corner as you're going down the hill, uh, on, on Titus, we have a little commercial corner there that would get bumped back. It's easy enough to fix, uh, or to adjust the building in that case, that little corner on, on Titus, fine, not a problem, but where that lot cuts in uh, into our building, into the bulk of our building, if all of a sudden that has to be back a meter and a half, there's seven floors of development, uh, the parking garage entrance, um, the ramps within the parking garage, like all of that changes uh, pretty significantly. And there's a case where, you know, as a pedestrian walking down the sidewalk, you would think that building was set back from this right of way uh five meters but it's just that the property line cuts in there you know so there's a place where us having a zero property line doesn't affect the public experience the part in the corner does and sure we can fix that 
uh, but it drastically, drastically changes the building. Uh, another one, I think I, I, if you, the letter that I submitted, there's one down the corner or down a block down, or it's even worse. Uh, it's that little triangle between Dutch Village Road and Elma and Elma, uh, however all that works. And, uh, you know, there's again a case where when you go from three, with three meters of space to push and pull walls of buildings, it's still not going to be a straight wall, but you can do something interesting. If, you, if you're uh, constrained to that meter and a half to, to push and pull the face of a building, you're basically following this wonky, wonky, wonky property line. And, and, and that's just a real challenge from a development point of view. Thank you. I appreciate that. Thank you, Councillor. Uh, so I'm not seeing anybody else with questions for clarification for Mr. Watson. So again, thank you for joining us tonight. Appreciate you taking the time and, and sharing in for your submission as well. Um, so there's nobody else that has signed up to speak. Now I'm wondering, uh, Krista, because we did uh, allow folks at one point, even if they didn't sign up, we would call three times just in case if somebody was on the phone. So has that, are we still using that? Rule. No, um, okay. that would be for in-person meetings um, where they couldn't show proof of vaccination. Okay. Um, so virtual settings, we have a hard deadline of Monday, 4.30. Um, yep, we're just back to that state right now. <laughs> All right, cool. Just wanted to, just to, to, be, to be short. All right, so uh, after Mr. motion Chair, to close. Uh, public hearing closed. Thank you. Seconded by... Councilor Morse, uh, public hearing is closed. Now I ask for uh, what's the wishes of community council. Well, Mr. Chair, um, if I could, um, I think I think maybe we we could ask for a supplementary report here if uh, my colleagues agree um, to look into the question of whether we've hit it right at 1.5 or if maybe two or two and a half meters might be more beneficial as the minimum. And also to see what we could do on, um, on a maximum setback that uh, might provide the flexibility that is being requested by this particular owner. So what I'll ask you to do is put the motion on the floor uh, okay. and then you could, you could put on your supplementary report. Okay, thank you, Mr. Chair. So I move that Halifax and West Community Council adopt the amendment to this C2C zone of the land use bylaw for Halifax mainland as set out in attachment A of the staff report dated November 12th, 2021. So move. Second, uh, Councillor Cleary. Thank you, seconded by Councillor Cleary and uh, Councillor Moore. So uh, I do see, I do see Councillor Cleary wants to speak. So uh, I'll give you a chance to speak and then I'll go to Councilor Clear. And if you want to come back for your supplementary, we'll, we'll go that way. Okay, uh, thank you. I guess I just want to briefly remind folks why we got into this. Um, I, I did ask for this staff report back last spring because of all the complaints coming forward from the public that uh, they, they uh, were feeling very crowded by the two buildings. The first two buildings built under C2C at the bottom of Rosedale that they couldn't see around the buildings when they were trying to make turns at that intersection, that it was causing problems because there was no sidewalk and people were parking all over the place. And, and there were a number of issues beyond uh, aesthetics, it was getting into safety issues. So, so that's where this came about. Um, the, the fact that the property lines are so uneven is a bit new to me. Um, and so I, I think maybe we do need to have some flexibility, but my main goal here is to have a better looking streetscape to make this work. Um, there's a $2 million project plan to redevelop Dutch Village Road. And now's the time to get it right because they're in they're, uh, at the 60% design phase or stage for that project. And uh, these, these little differences that we make can make a big difference in terms of how that project turns out and how well it works for the community. Thank you for that. Uh, go to Councillor Cleary. Thank you, Mr. Chair, and thank you, colleagues, and thank you, Councillor Morse, for initiating this uh, uh, in the first place. Um, I, uh, it, it's funny, when you look at, uh, Mr. Watson mentioned this, uh, 
you know, if you look at the center plan, there is a map schedule 18 that shows you the front yard setbacks and flanking yard setbacks uh, all the way around all of the different streets in, in Halifax Peninsula and Dartmouth uh, within the circumferential. Um, and they're not even, I mean, some of them are half a meter, some of them are one meter, some of them are one and a half meter, some of them are two and a half meter. Uh, Gottingen has three uh, different uh, setbacks depending on which part of the street you're on. And I think the nuance is really important. So I appreciate what Mr. Gillis and staff have recommended here. Uh, this is a, a portion of, of Dutch Village Road and we're looking at these particular zones within that. And, and I, I don't know if you'll ever get it right. Uh, it's a matter of getting it within the realm of what's reasonable. And, and I think one and a half meters is reasonable, but I do have a question for Mr. Gillis uh, and, and you know my, my support for the main motion or a supplementary report, uh, I don't wanna say hinges on this, but um, this is gonna be an important factor. So Mr. Gillis, uh, through you, Mr. Chair to Mr. Gillis, um, under the charter, developers or any property owner can apply for a variance. Is a front yard setback in this particular one, is this one where someone can apply for a variance? So if it is a very um, in, in, you know, uh, uh, specific situation or unique situation, is this something someone could say, you know what, we would apply for a variance because you know, the property line does do this. Uh, is that something that can happen under our charter uh, within the planning and development rules? You're on mute. <laughs> Zoom meeting. <laughs> uh, through you, Mr. Chair, yes, uh, a variance could be an option for the front yard setback. And unless uh, our solicitor wants to, to weigh in, that's, that's the quick answer. Yeah. So, I mean, if someone was challenged by this and did have a particularly unique situation that needed to be accommodated, that is something that they could apply for. A development officer could rule on that. And eventually it could come to, say, a community council uh, like Halifax and West for Dutch Village uh, for councillors to weigh in on, on whether that was appropriate or not. So, I mean, that is a, a safety valve, if, if you will, for very uh, you know, individual uh, and unique circumstances. So I appreciate that answer. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Councillor. Uh, Councillor Cuddle. Thank you, uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. And um, yeah, Councillor Cleary was uh, just got to some of the, the points I wanted to raise about the uneven property lines. Um, when you look at the uh, the mapping, it, you know, it's really obvious that even though you know from my naked eye here that this right of way varies very much in width, um, and I understand kind of where we're at right now with trying to balance the urgency of addressing some of those right away concerns prior to doing a lot of this um, you know road work around you know investment in in the in the roads and the sidewalks in this area um, so I was pleased to hear that uh, variants could be applied for because I think that you know it's important that we get that um, right away space working for all for all the users, um, but also looking at kind of the landscaping opportunities for trees and the other things that add to the quality, not just not just the function, but the quality as well is really important. And and on that note, um, I, I um, you know thinking about the map, the minimum is important, but the maximum too. And um, you know, I just you know you were speaking. Um, you know, Sean, about, you know, the quality of, of urban design and street walls and, and how all of those function together. And, and, you know, to that point, I think there's different ways of conceptualizing what a, a street wall actually is. Um, you know, New York City would be a fabulous example of where you see different planning strategies over time result in a variations of street walls that add to the eclectic nature of a street. So on one hand, you want, you want to have readability. On the other hand, you also want to have some variance in, in interest and experience as you're walking down the street. Um, you know, this, th I think that there's unique opportunities here in Dutch Village Road to do something quite different than what we see in in the center. Um, so uh, anyway, I look forward to hearing what Councillor Morris brings forward with her supplementary report. Thank you. 
Thank you, Councillor. And I do see it in the chat, the request. So I'm going to go back to you, Councillor Moore. Oh, thank you. Okay. <laughs> Someone's helping me with the motion here. Uh, thank you, Krista. Um, so this, uh, I guess, can everyone see that in the chat? Is this, this is the proposed motion then to defer? Is that correct for a supplementary? Okay. Councillor Morris, just um, if uh, you could also indicate, uh, and also if Sean could indicate if the last part around the supplementary report to look at other setback options provide staff with enough information to go and, uh, and prepare that. Uh, through you, Mr. Chair, I'm just going to take a look at this and take 10 seconds to think. And also, if you want to formally put the motion on the floor, reading it out, Councillor Morris. Okay, I'll just give Sean a minute here. Through you, Mr. Chair, I think that's good. We've had a lot of discussion. And what I'm reading here is we like the idea of where staff's going, but let's make sure we have the right numbers. Is that a fair synopsis? That's fair to me. Okay. I think we're, I think we're close, but I think we need a little more flexibility. So um, is this too, if, if this is okay wording for you, Sean, then I'm happy to read it out. Uh, through, through you, Mr. Chair, I, I'm good with this. And what we'll come back with is likely a fairly thin report but some different potential amendments to that maximum and minimum front yard setbacks. Okay. Okay, so you can put the motion on the floor. Okay, thank you, Mr. Chair. So I move that Halifax and West Community Council defer item 10.1.1 land use bylaw amendment for front yard setbacks in the C2C Dutch Village Road mixed use zone to request a supplementary staff report to look at other setback options. So move. Second it by. I'll second that. Thank you, Councillor Cuddle. Uh, Councillor Morse, anything further on that? No, I really appreciate the discussion. I think we're very close here. Um, I hope we this doesn't cause too much of a delay. And um, thanks everyone for your uh, comments and uh, advice on this. Thank you. Uh, Councilor Cleary. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, so I understand what Councilor Morris is trying to do here, uh, add more nuance and, and see if we're on the right number. Um, I'm not going to support the deferral only because I think the, the, the range that we have, the one and a half to now three meters, is, is tight enough, I'm not, um, unless you change all of those dramatically, which I'm not sure is appropriate or in keeping with similar zones nearby. Um, you're pushing it out in time, which means that applications that are coming through, if approved, will actually be approved under the old rules, not under the new rule. And so there is the downside that you could end up with uh, applications being with coming through and saying, hey, you know, as long as we meet the current rules, uh, we're all good uh, until we change the new rules. So I, I just uh, put that out uh, that, you know, <laughs> with the law of unintended consequences being what it is, you, you don't know what you're going to get uh, in, the, in the short term. Uh, and, and perhaps staff could speak to that. I don't know what the application's in and if they are all as of right, or if some of them do require coming back to council uh, for changes or amendments that are required. But, you know, that would be my only hesitation in supporting this is that I would rather see us make the change as soon as possible rather than defer it to some later date. You know, if that takes weeks or months to come back to us, you know, there, there may be things that get approved that maybe don't meet what your expectation is uh, in, in, and meet the current zero meter setback. So I don't know if staff have any comment on that. Mr. Gillis? Uh, through you, Mr. Chair. I important to note, which we didn't in the public hearing presentation due to the complexity, if you will, when Halifax and West Community Council gave first reading to this in December, that triggered a provision in the HRM charter, which says that 
applications coming in that haven't been given a development permit have to uh, show that they can meet the proposed amendments that have been given first reading. And I'm gonna defer to uh, the solicitor because this is the process type of question that is hers, but she's posted the section that says a development permit that is inconsistent with the proposed land use bylaw or a proposed amendment, which this is, uh, may not be issued for 150 days from the publication of the first notice advertising the council's intention to adopt or amend the bylaw. So because we've given first reading, we're in this 150 day period where there is uh, the requirement to essentially be consistent with the proposed amendment. So there is some safety factor there. Uh, there's a couple of different uh, things that are making their way through the permitting process. Um, but to my understanding, none of them have been given that development permit. Uh, for some of them, this isn't an issue. They're already meeting it with their proposals. So uh, that is an, a, a powerful thing to keep in mind when debating uh, what to do with this. Does anyone know, if I could follow up, where we are relative to that 150 days? That's about five months. Uh, I recall Councillor Morris moving this quite a, a number of months ago, so I'm not sure where we are in that time frame. So we placed the ad, uh, which is the notice in, in the charter that is referred to uh, that uh, the solicitor Meg McDougall sent me. Um, so December 31st was the date that that went in the paper. So that is when the clock ticks. So we're 130 odd days uh, until that, until that uh, clock runs out. Okay, appreciate that. Thank you. Uh, all right. Any anyone else with questions, comments on this on the deferral? So then I'll, I'll speak really quickly. Uh, so I was in the same boat as Councillor Clary uh, of of not feeling that I could support it, but hearing the last piece, understanding that we're at that I guess 130 or so day mark, and and Mr. Gillis did mention potentially we get a thin report. <laughs> Uh, and I'm assuming thin means slightly faster than usual. Uh, I, I'm a little bit more comfortable with supporting this, but I do, I do feel that the the variance process is the process that should be used when we're looking at trying to give more more leeway for specific projects. It's so so uh, in, in 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 unique aspects to specific projects, uh, I should say. So, so I, I, I can support this now, knowing that the, the clock started taking um, just the 130 so days ago, um, which, or no, that doesn't make sense. Anyway, that we have time, uh, I'm not good at math. Uh, uh, we have time for, for that potential project to be approved, but I do feel that the other side of it, that we do have the variance process that will, that developers could use if there were, uh, issues that they needed to deal with. Um, so I'll definitely be supporting and knowing uh, what we've got from our solicitor. And I see your hand is up, Meg. Yes, Meg McDougall solicitor here. I just wanted to point out on the record, I believe most of you may be already aware of this, but if the supplemental staff report comes back and it does recommend a substantive amendment, so a change to the setbacks, we would likely have to run through this public hearing process again. Right. Thank you for that, Meg. Uh, Councilor Morris, any any comments at all with, with that last piece of info, or do you want to call for the question? Well, I uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. I'm really of two minds um, because I, I feel like I would like to move more quickly on this. Um, I should have mentioned to everyone, and, and thank you, Sean, for uh, explaining the... <laughs> What, what was uh, initiated in December um, that, that start, starts the clock ticking and gave 150 days. And uh, so that gave me some uh, comfort with asking for a deferral because I think the deferred report will come back relatively quickly. Um, on the other hand, if uh, council members are comfortable with the variance process being used to accommodate any new buildings that 
can't fit within the one and a half and three meter max, then I'm, you know what, I'm of two minds. I could go either way, actually. So um, I, I don't know if any other counselors want to weigh in on this, but um, I, it, I know it's very cumbersome to arrange another public hearing. Thank you, counselor. And we have the great Ben Sivak who has his hand up. Uh, hello, sir. Yeah. Uh, thank you, Councillor Smith. And uh, 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 apologies for, for jumping in here. I just want to offer one more option for Councillor to consider. And I'm just really thinking this more from a resourcing perspective than a, uh, um, to accomplish some of the same, same goals I think this committee is, is talking about is uh, that, as Sean mentioned, there's another uh, project still looking at the broader, uh, looking at the C2C zone and expanding the area. So Another approach could be for council to to approve the amendments at, as is tonight, while providing direction to staff to further consider um, perhaps increasing the maximum setback or, or look, looking at the setbacks again to that subsequent report that uh, look at that C two C zone, which was coming in the, in the coming months, uh, regardless of any uh, further council direction about that project. So, just another another approach to to approve and then still provide further direction through the other policy project that's still that's still coming to this to this council. Thank you, Ben. That's that's very helpful, uh, Councilor Mason. Yeah, I mean, Ben is saying uh, I think uh, the, a good way forward is is it is easier. I think at this point you will have less regrets if we pass this tonight and then relax it than if we don't pass it tonight and then things come in uh, and move to the permitting stage and you've lost the opportunity. Uh, and since there's another process already underway, uh, I you know my recommendation would be to withdraw the the request for a deferral and that we pass it and then pass another motion asking this that this be included in the in the broader review. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Councillor uh, Councilor Cleary. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Just to kind of follow up on, on what Ben and Councillor Mason said. Uh, so I'm comfortable with one and a half minimum three max. And uh, and I agree that you know if we pass it now, it's done. We do have another opportunity or another kick at the can, as, as it were, when the rest of the uh, uh, potential amendments, if we pass them for C2C zoning, come back, uh, which shouldn't be too long, uh, as I understand it. And so it, it might come at the same time that a supplementary report would have come. So um, uh, I, I will put it out there for Councillor Morse to, you know, uh, based on Councillor Mason's uh, uh, um, recommendation that maybe we we pass this and then ask for a supplemental report for what you're asking for but it comes back knowing that we've already done this change and we can change it again uh, when the new package comes forward okay i hadn't thought of that and i like that approach so if if you uh like that approach would you uh would you gosh words are not working right now um would you want to pull this motion uh, and then we approve this and come back with an ask for a supplementary report that would be attached, or do we actually, what would be the, the wording? Would it be a supplementary or would it be, uh, Ben, maybe you can help here. Would we ask for this to be included in the review or it's already part of the review. So we don't need to add, have another motion. Uh, thanks for the uh, question, question, Mr. Chair. Um, through you back to the committee. I think for, um, I guess I'll, I'm, not, I'm not entirely clear on the, um, um, familiar with the first council direction on this, but as a, C2, as a setback is already pulled out, I think for clarity, uh, a short motion from this, 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 uh, this community council to, to ensure that the, the setbacks is looked at through that subsequent project work would be, uh, it would be uh, helpful to ensure that it is indeed covered in that that, that report that I understand is, is coming in, in, in the coming months. Okay, so so the, the we would approve it and then uh, ask that while the review and maybe then you can put the name of the review in the chat just so we know what the actual review is called, um, that the setbacks be reviewed as part of that ongoing review. Then maybe uh, we can have Chris uh, or whoever might be typing away to throw something in the chat for us. Supply consideration, review, step, effort, project review for Dutch Foot Road. Uh, 
Councillor Morris, uh, we just got something for Krista. Does that look good to you? Just Mr. Chair, not sure if that's the project name, but um, we're very general at this moment until staff can provide that clarity. Right. So without the, the project name, does this do what you want, Councillor Morris? I think so. I'm just hoping someone can clarify. Uh, are we talking about adding this to the original motion and voting on it, or do we vote on the original motion, pass that, and then bring in uh, another motion on the supplementary report? You got As a second. The okay. Last. Okay. That's fine with me then. Thank you. And uh, Mr. Gillis, actually, I'm not sure who this would be handed off to, uh, either Sean or Ben. Um, does this this report or this motion uh, give you enough direction to do that work? Uh, through you, Mr. Chair, I'm working on a little bit more detail okay. uh, to help that out. And I'll hopefully post that in a second here. Um, that would include things like the case numbers and give us a little bit more. So just working on that. Okay, no worries. Frank, Mr. Chair, just for clarity, uh, the first step would be to uh, withdraw the deferral, if that is the wish. Second step would be uh, to approve this process, if that's the direction. And then the third would be to put forward a motion for a supplementary report. Yeah, so let's do that. So, Councillor Morris, you already said that you don't mind withdrawing, and the seconder was Councillor Cuddle, I think. The council who seconds. Yeah, I, I agree with that. I'm good. Okay. All Thank right. You. So that motion has been withdrawn. So what we'll do is we'll vote on the main motion. Okay. Uh, so a question on the main motion. Question. Questions to call. All those in favor of the main motion, say aye. 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 Opposed, say nay. All right. So uh, we do have. We do have some work being done in the chat here to get the second motion up and running. So we'll just give a second. Maybe what we'll do is uh, take a 708, maybe we'll take a three minute break just so that can be worked on and then we'll come back. Does that work? Yes, thanks. Thanks, Mr. Chair. All right, so we'll, we'll, let, we'll let that happen and we'll come back in three or so minutes. Let's make it even five. <laughs> Are we live? We are still live. We are going to put the uh, break slide up here. Okay, thanks.
Councillor Smith, are you there? Yeah, it just wouldn't let me. Uh... Yeah, apologies. <laughs> <laughs> no, no worries. All right, are we ready, folks? Ready. All right. So we do have a motion. And so, Councillor Morse, if you want to put it on the floor. Okay, I wasn't being allowed to unmute. Uh... Not me either. All right, I'm, I'm back. <laughs> okay. Uh, okay. I just want to ask one question before I read this out. Um, this choice of word upcoming amendments is very deliberate, I guess. Um, I was under the impression that there was a report coming out for other aspects, but I guess amendments is the correct word to describe what's coming forward after this. Is that right? Uh, through you, Mr. Chair, uh, Sean Gillis again. I, I, I'm not sure that that is particularly critical. There's okay. gonna be a report with the amendment package. Oh. Okay. Sorry, right. I have a notice to start my video. Um, there will be a report with the amendment package that will be going to regional council. Um, so this would essentially just wrap all of this stuff under that report and the, any amendment packages coming out of it. In that case, it looks good. Thank you. Um, so I will read the new motion out then. Is that correct? Yeah, okay. <laughs> I move that Halifax and West Community Council recommend that Halifax Regional Council direct the Chief Administrative Officer to consider the front yard setbacks in the C2C zone through the upcoming amendments as part of cases 23245 and case 22816. So move. Mr. Chair, sorry, we are a bit premature. Uh, we need to deal with the motion that is currently on the floor. So we did do the withdrawal of the. Um, we did do the withdrawal, but we need to deal with the, I guess, sorry, if I'm, if I'm understanding correctly, we could deal with this one first, but we really should deal with the staff recommendation first. No, I thought we voted. Didn't we vote? Or maybe I missed yeah. that. And maybe I oversighted it while trying to figure <laughs> this one. Apologies. Um, do you want to just check? They did. did. I have okay. confirmation. Right. Sorry. I have confirmation. <laughs> you did. We are good. Continue on, we need a seconder. All right, so who wants to second that motion? Councillor Cuddle, thank you. I'll second that. Thank you very much. It, it's it's seven nineteen. It's been a long day for most of us, so you, you, get, you get a couple of those. <laughs> um, all right, are there any comments from members? Seeing none, uh, we did have a good discussion on it already, so we'll call for the question on that. Question? Questions and call, all those in favor say aye. Uh, Aye. Aye. Thank you. Jose, nay. <laughs> All right, that that passes. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so moving on to the next item. Let me check here. All right, correspondence, petition, delegations. Do we have? Oh, we do have correspondence. Uh, so, of course, if you want to do your thing. So, as noted earlier, we have we had correspondence for item ten one one. It it was uh, circulated to the community council members prior to the meeting. Uh, there's no additional correspondence outside of that, and the clerk's office has received no petitions. Thank you. Uh, so, no petitions. Any petitions from members? No presentations. We have none. Information items none. Going to report 13.1.1 uh, case 23781 discharge development agreement for 1956 uh, 58 Rosebank Avenue, Halifax. We do have a presentation uh, for this one if, if council would like. And Councillor Clear, your hands up. 
Uh, I'd be happy to uh, put the motion on the floor and give a quick description. If people want a presentation after that, I can give people a very quick synopsis of what it is. Uh, it's literally down the street from me. Um, uh, so I'd move that Halifax and West Community Council one approved by resolution the discharge development agreement, which shall be substantially of the same form as set out in attachment A of the staff report dated January 4, 2022, and two, require the discharge agreement be signed by the property owner within 240 days or any extension thereof, granted by council on request of the property owner from the date of final approval by council and any other bodies as necessary, including applicable appeal appeal periods, whichever is later. Uh, otherwise, this approval will be void and obligations arising here under shall be at an end. Second it by. Second that. Thank you, Councillor Cuddle. Councillor Cleary. So very quickly, uh, there was a development agreement that had to be put in place for this property, believe it or not, to build a sunroom onto the back of the property. Uh, this happened, this was before amalgamation. This is the old city of Halifax when everything was hard to do and it was legally non-conforming because it was two units in an R1 zone. Uh, center plan has actually made this an ER2 zone. So it's actually totally fine to have multiple units and they just wanna do some renovations in addition, but they're legally not allowed to because this development agreement is still on the property. So they have to discharge this many, many decade old development agreement in order to do stuff that's allowed under the current bylaw, essentially what it is. I don't know if staff, if you need a presentation from staff, uh, then, then we're in a heap of trouble. But anyway, uh, <laughs> my recommendation is we discharge this and allow the property owners to get on with what they're allowed to do under our current bylaw. Thank you, Council Cleary. And just really quickly for members, I'll just look for hands or thumbs. Uh, are you okay to not have a presentation? Yeah, got some head nods, got some thumbs up. Okay, so uh, if there's no one else who'd like to speak, call for the question. I'll call for the question. Thank you. Questions called. In favor, say aye. 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 Opposed, say nay. All right, that passes. Thank you, Councillor Cleary, for that. Making it quick. Uh, moving on to 1312, case 20226, land use bylaw amendment to reduce parking requirements for community centers in Tiverly Lakes. Beachville and uh, Councilor Sutter, I'll go to you. I can put that on the floor, Mr. Chair. Show my paper around here. Are you okay? Case number. 13.1.2 and the case is 20226, the land use bylaw amendment to reduce parking requirements for the community center in Timberley Lakeside, Beachville. The motion is that Halifax and West Community Council give first reading to consider approval of the proposed amendment to the land use bylaw for Timberley Lakeside, Beachville to reduce the parking requirements for the recreation facility and the community centers as set out in attachment A of the staff report dated November 3rd, 2021 and schedule a public hearing. Back in Councillor Cleary. Thank you, seconded by Councillor Cleary, Councillor Stoddard. Thank you, Councillor um, Cleary. This is a um, situation where the old community center or rec center is coming down and they're proposing, well, actually they are in the process of building the new one. Um, the, requirements, the requirements for the new community center are different. They're gonna have some extra um, recreational facilities that won't allow the parking to be quite as big. So they're looking to amend the bylaw so they can reduce the parking. And uh, otherwise I don't see that there's a problem with this. They're still parking on the street and then the subdivision behind. Um, so I, I, I should, <laughs> there is no problem with this as it's presented by staff. Thank you, Councillor. I see Councillor Cuddle has a question. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Chair. And um, I have a question for staff. Um, in reading this report, uh, am I correct in understanding that the changes being made here will apply to all community centers? And is that within just this 
planning strategy area or is that across the municipality as a whole, like through the MPS? Through you, Mr. Chair, to the councilor, uh, Sean Gillis again. This is for all uh, community and uh, community centers in the plan area. So Timberley, Lakeside, Beachville. So it's only for that plan area, but it would be all, all, com all community centers. And does this have um, any implication or set any precedent for community centers um, in other, other planning areas in the municipality? Uh, through you, Mr. Chair. No, what would set precedent to change things is that there's direction in the integrated mobility plan and an earlier parking strategy to reduce basically all HRM parking requirements. Uh, so that would be a much more directive thing. And that's basically in many ways a resourcing question and a council priority question. All right, thank you. Seeing nobody else uh, looking to speak. Uh, actually, Mr. Oh. Chair, um, I do have a question if I okay. could. Yep. yep. Uh, so in terms of reducing the parking, is there anything that, that is being done to compensate, like providing better transit links or more space for buses or something like that so people can use transit to get to the community center? Actually, there is a bus stop right in front of the community center and that's going to remain there. So the access to the new community center will be the same. Okay, so it, it does have transit links. Yes. Okay, all right, thank you. You're welcome. Also uh, through you, Mr. Chair. So the way this came about is that the design team, if you will, over at Parks and Rec uh, at Recreation was designing the community facility they went, they pulled our land use bylaw and they looked at the parking requirements and they compared them to what they actually felt they needed. And to give an example, it's, it's really different. So for a 30,000 odd square feet uh, rec center, our bylaw requires 307 spaces, 307. And with the proposed changes, we're suggesting 62 is what they'll need minimum and they're like, that's totally fine. We're good with that. So uh, one of the giant problems is that, and I'm, I'm not making this up. Um, if you read through our parking strategy from 2008 or so, it's like your parking requirements, especially in the old county areas, are very, very, very high, like off the chart by Canadian standards. So essentially, we're taking a totally outrageous standard and making it much more reasonable. Thank you. Thank you. So not seeing anybody uh, call for the question on this item. Question. Question is called. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed, say nay. That passes. So um, I have three in a row. So it's supposed to be the, the Councilor Smith show um for a moment so i wonder if vice chair councilor Cotto, if you want to take the reins and and i can go through these three three uh projects here um yes uh sure that's just you know <laughs> throwing me right in the game there mr chair um yeah. do i need um any notes on this uh krista or do i just you know, think somewhere sent do I need those? No, all you need is just the uh, the agenda, and we'll start. We're starting at thirteen one three, and uh, go through the steps of, of. I'll read the motion. That whole process of uh, debating, and then calling the vote, and then I'll go to the next one. Okay, great. So uh, I ask for my colleagues' patience as I work my way through this, please. Um, all right, so we are on item 13.1.3, case 22523, amending development agreement for the corner of Gottagen and Bilby Streets, PID 00127522, Halifax. And uh, 
Councillor Smith, would you like to move that? Thank you. So the motion is the House Access Community Council give notice of motion to consider the proposed amending development agreement as set out in attachment A of the staff report dated January 4th, 2022 for a non-substantive amendment to enable changes to a previously approved eight-story mixed-use building at the corner of Bill Beach Street, uh, Halifax. Second, Councillor Clear. Okay. Councillor Smith. Thank you. So um, just open up my file here for that one. I got a lot of screens over here. So th there is a there is a few changes on on this item that was being. Oh wait, I might be on the wrong one. So I should have been prepared to to uh, not be in the chair. All right, there we go. So there's a few, a few changes that were requested on, on this item and reading through the report, uh, didn't, didn't have much issues with what was being asked for and then, you know, seeing things like adding, adding more bedrooms uh, and uh, allowing for bicycle parking. It's great. So happy to support this and buildings already approved. Uh, so I, I'm not going to speak on the already approved application but these these amendments I, I think are are to make a better building so I'll leave that and 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 call for the question and, and let somebody else counsel query so I'll leave it there all right um yeah I see a question here from Councillor Cleary Thank you, uh, Madam Vice Chair. Uh, not a question, just a very quick comment. I mean, these are non-substantive amendments, but the biggest change I see, which is a very beneficial one, is you know they, they are adding a, a small number of in additional units, but the big thing was moving to more two or more bedroom units from 28 in their initial proposal to now 60 units. So much larger family sized units. So, uh, you know, this is a, a good thing for the community. So uh, I'm in support of moving this forward. Thank you. Okay. Um, I don't see anyone else with questions or comments. So I will call for the question. Really, really quickly. Uh, sorry, I just, because of Council Perry, uh, brought that up so i know there's going to be some questions from community members related to well now that we're adding uh, more two bedrooms there's a good chance that there might be folks who are sharing uh sharing an apartment as as roommates or there might be more vehicles what we're the goal of what we're trying to do in a peninsula and uh, is is to not have uh as a one-to-one -one parking uh so so as we start to see more apartments come online. Uh, I know that our, our staff has been working on ways to deal with the parking situation within that little block. And there's been lots of lots of developments within the last three years or so happening at once. So, so I know that's a concern that will come up and we'll make sure that we deal with it appropriately. Uh, other than that, thank you and I'll call for the question. All right, um, all those in Favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? All right, that motion carries. On to item 3.1.4, case 23936, amending a development agreement for 2858-2866 Gottagen Street and 5516-5518 McCarra Street. Thank you. I'll read the motion uh, that Halifax and West Community Council give notice of motion to consider the proposed amending development agreement as set out in attachment A, staff report dated January 5th, 2022 for a non-substantive amendment to an existing development agreement to allow for an extension to the commencement and completion date for development. Second. Okay. Second by Councillor Morris. Councillor Smith. Thank you again and not much on this one. Uh, extension on the commencement date of uh, two years, uh, which is consistent with what we're doing with center plan. Um, and, you know, one of the things that I do like to see with this one is the, the, the current owner is, is hoping to develop 
uh, and that's why they need the extensions because you know we're seeing a lot of uh, land being sat on and not being built. So I hope with this extension that they'll be able to start development and get some units in the ground uh, in the neighborhood. So uh, nothing much to, to, to be added to, to that other than I, I support uh, the extension. And we'll call for the question if yep. there's nothing else. All right, yep, if there's no comments, um, question. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All those opposed? None. So that motion carries. Um, I know, uh, have we lost Councillor Mason here? I don't see him on my screen. Uh, here. I see him. He's, a, he's in the meeting, yep. Oh, he is. Okay, great. Thank you. Um, all right. So case 13.1.5, uh, case 23872, discharging development agreement for lands at 5785 Sarah Street, 2400 Agricola Street, and 5780 West Street, Halifax. Okay, I'll put this on the floor, thank you, Vice Chair, that Halifax West Community Council won approve by resolution the discharging agreement, which shall be substantially of the same form as set out in attachment A of the staff report dated January 6, 2022, and two required discharging agreement be signed by the property owner within 240 days or any extension therefore granted by council on request of the property owner from the date of final approval by council. Any other bodies as necessary, including applicable appeal periods, whichever is later. Otherwise, this approval will be void and obligations arising here under shall be at an end. Second, Councillor Cleary. All right, second by Councillor Cleary. Councillor Smith. Yeah, so, so uh, this one is, is interesting. I tried to find, I remember reading an article somewhere, but I couldn't remember where it was. Uh, about the, the the owner of this property uh, coming to council asking for the discharge of the development agreement, and it, it says in the in the report that they're hoping to develop under the center plan package. So I'm just wondering from staff if they can confirm from what they understand the uh, the reasoning for discharging this, if this is for them to enable them to develop. I, it's in the report, but just want to get clarification there. Um, as a comment, I was also very interesting to read the old development agreement, which was from, I think, 1994 or something, and seeing all the handwritten amendments that were <laughs> on that, which I can only imagine the, the many other ones within, uh, especially outside in, in the, the, the counties and other areas that weren't, uh, you know, on the peninsula. Uh, I can only imagine what their development agreements might have looked like in, in the past. Uh, so I'm happy that we're, we're not doing handwritten notes on development agreements anymore. Um, but yeah, I do wonder uh, from staff's perspective if, if the intention is to develop under package A. Um, because and again, what I remember reading was, was that they weren't intending to develop, but to add an extension to the property. Uh, but uh, again, I couldn't find that article to be able to quote that or not. Hello, Councillor. Yes, I can, I can definitely... Um answer that question for you. So yeah, as you said, the, the agreement's from the 1990s and it was put there to allow, uh, allow a hotel use in the property. So if you're driving on the Great you're probably familiar with that hotel. Um, it has in on green letters uh, for the sign. And so what they are hoping to do is discharge that um, development agreement so that they can do some residential infill. There's a surface parking lot on Sarah Street that's associated with the hotel and they would like to uh, put a single unit dwelling there. Uh, they do have additional parking that's still on the hotel property that is sufficient for them for the hotel use. So the hotel use would uh, stay. It's a permitted use under the corridor zone uh, with the center plan. They just want to put some residential infill on the uh, service parking lot up there. Right. So that's what I that's what I remember reading was that it would be for a single unit dwelling. But with discharging this, they still do have the option to develop under the the center plan if they wanted to. That wouldn't they wouldn't be not allowed to do that uh the the single unit dwelling no just in general so say they wanted to to tear it all down and then uh develop under center plan rules they discharging this would allow them to also do that as well that's absolutely correct yes okay okay so just 
just for those who may be watching and I don't know how many folks are watching online that even that that is a possibility that they could also develop under extended plan rules which could be a totally different um building so overall support that and and we'll see how this goes forward so thank you for uh, the clarification and if nobody else i'll call for the question all right um all those in favor uh, all right Okay. Anyone opposed? That motion carries. And um, Mr. Chair, would you like the chair back? Appreciate it. You you did it. No issues. <laughs> go star. Um, all right. So we'll go to our next item, which is 1316 case 23483, uh, 14th amending agreement to allow residential development on the reserve school site and uh, Alamissi Way in Bernoulli, Kimberly. Uh, somebody please help me with the pronunciation because I know I got it wrong. And uh, there's no presentation, so I'll go to Councillor Stoddard. It's Almafi, Al Mr. Al Chair. Al okay, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> yeah, I know, I had problems with it too. Um, I like to present a motion that Halifax and West Community Council give notice of motion to consider the proposed amending agreement as set out in attachment A of the staff report dated January 6, 2022 to change development permitted on the subject sites from a public school to residential. Second. Thank you, Second Council. by Councilor Morris. Councilor Stutt. Thank you, Councilor Morris. Um, colleagues, I have been advised by HRM planning staff that a letter was received by Nova Scotia Department of Education dated August 7th, 2018. Planning staff has advised that they, are, they are, have requested that the applicant confirm that the Department of Education's position in a new letter uh, before we decide, we as a council, make the decision on the merits of this application. I ask that this matter be deferred until the new letter is received. I'll second the deferral. Thank uh, you. So that, that motion is on the floor now, seconded by Councilor Mason. Uh, anything further, Councilor Sada? Um, no, I just um, feel that the community and just to satisfy this request for a motion that uh, a new letter just to confirm the standings of um, the Department of Education and how they feel about this, this sale. Because it has been a while since they signed that original letter. Thank you. Any comments from members? Anyone, anything further? No, I'll just say really quickly, yeah, I support that as well. Understanding that the last letter was 2018 and as we know how fast things change in the Department of Ed, it'd be good to just get an update from them. So support that. And um, if there's nobody else, call for the question on the deferral pending the letter from HRC. Okay. Thank you. I'm assuming that we'll just do what's the vote. Any, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Right. Opposed say nay. Nay. All right, so that motion passes. Moving on to, that is it for public. Uh, are there any motions from members? Uh, I'll ask for someone to move the in-camera minutes from December 15th, 2021. Okay, so move. Thank you. Councilor Sutter and seconded by Councilor Cuddle. Uh, all those in favor of uh, approving the in camera minutes, December 15th, say aye. 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 Opposed, say nay. Um, there are no add ons before we go in camera. Uh, there's no added items, and we'll just do public participation. Uh, we have no registered speakers uh, who. Okay, who asked to speak at in the deadline was 4.30 Monday, January 17th, 2022. 
And the date of our next meet meeting is February 22nd, 2022. And I'll ask for a motion to go in camera. I'm on the file. Thank you. Moved by Councilor Cuddle to go in camera. Uh, so just Mr. Mr. Chair, oh, I'll let you pass that first. Yep. Uh, 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 vote in favor to go in camera. <laughs> All right, thank you. So we'll just ask members if they could uh, please leave this meeting and join the uh, in-camera meeting that was sent to you uh, by Microsoft Teams. Um, and then once we're done there, we'll reconvene here. Thank you. All right, see you there.
Hello. Hello, Counselor. I am just going to see if I can get your camera turned on here. That's fine. I don't think nobody wants to see my mug anyway. Such a nice mug. <laughs> we'll appreciate it. <laughs> Sorry, we're just having a bit of a technical difficulty getting uh, cameras returned, but the mics don't seem to be an issue. Yeah, I'm happy to. I'm happy to start if no one else has an issue. Okay, nope. we'll work through it as we go. Okay, all right. Um, so we are back from in camera. Uh, we have two motions to ratify. Uh, so I'm just wondering if those could be put in the chat, possibly. For members to read, please. Um, unless Councillor Mason, you're since you're such a vet, if you if you know what we're we're gonna say. Honestly, I got nothing left in the old brain today, <laughs> but do something like uh, help move that Halifax West Community Council approve the appointments made in the uh, January eighteenth uh, in camera meeting. Is that close enough, Krista? Yes, I'll put that in the chat one moment. I'm so sorry. No worries. I mean, clearly Zoom not working is entirely your fault. <laughs> clearly. <laughs> All right, there we go. Uh, okay, I move that Halifax West Community Council adopt the recommendations approved during the private confidential January 18th, uh, uh, the meeting private confidential meeting of January 18th, 2022, and to release private confidential staff report dated uh, December 9, 2021 to the public once the conditions outlined in the report have been met. Second. Second. Thank you, Councillor Morse. Second that. Uh, uh, that is incorrect. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's released the right. private and confidential. It is released the uh, decision of the uh, Yes, council once yeah. the nominees have been notified. That's correct. Sorry, we'll make that adjustment. Okay, thank you. Is it December 9th or December 15th? Uh, that first staff report was December uh, the 9th. 15th, yes. uh, December 9th, yes, but we will, it's to release the, the, the names uh, following. Okay. All right, uh, question on that. All those in favor say aye. 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 Both say nay. Uh, all right, next, uh, 15 3, Councillor Cuddle. Yeah. Chris, is that kind of the same as what you posted? Yeah, and, and probably just to be streamlined is to just go with the first one to adopt the recommendations approved during the meeting. Um, and we'll just we'll just leave it at that. It's it's all encompassing for uh, letting the names be public once uh, once we go from there. Right. Okay, so 15.3. Okay, uh, that Halifax and West Community Council one adopt the recommendations approved during the private and confidential January 18th, 2022 meeting. Second, Councillor Cleary. Thank you, Councillor. Second by Councillor Cleary. Nothing on that, Councillor. No. Uh, uh, no. <laughs> yeah, there's, there's nothing. It's in camera. Uh, so question on that. All those in favor say aye. 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 All those say nay. Thank you. Um, so that's it for our business, uh, we already did public participation. The date of our next meeting is February 22nd, 2022. Um, we'll see if we're in person or not. <laughs> it's up in the air at this point. Um, and call for mover for adjournment. Motion to adjourn. Thank you. Everyone jump to that one. All right.